here today with my brother. Um, he uh, he's kind of new to this social media making videos thing, man. But we've been brothers for some time now. Um, he's got a very positive message. Y'all already know my message is about uh, you know helping my fellow one percenters make positive choices, stay righteous, stick to the code. And, uh, you know, I'm going to let my brother introduce himself. What's happening, y'all? It's Flair. You know, uh, Flair, young Flair, um, you know, also known as Flair in the chair now. Um, you know, uh, I was a biker, you know, 1% outlaw motorcycle biker. Uh, you know, I got into a motorcycle accident. I was drinking and riding, um, you know, which, which I shouldn't have been. Uh, put me in a really bad place, but um, me and the bro Miklo have had many conversations over the years, and um, you know, I resonate with his message, and he resonates with my message, and um, we just decided to to make something happen, and um, you know, put some information out there, and just have a real conversation, and let y'all hear it, let y'all hear what we got to say, let y'all hear what we believe in, what we think, what we don't agree with, um, when it comes to this. You know, outlaw one percent motorcycle club world and and just life in general, brotherhood, just brotherhood. Oh, hey, bro. So, you know, we just we just gonna talk and we're gonna have a nice conversation and y'all can chime in and you know in the comments tell us what you guys you know what you guys agree with, what you guys don't agree with, and you know we can have another conversation afterwards. All day, all day, brother. Maybe uh, one of many. Um. Yeah, man, that's with your message, you know, uh, the videos of yours that caught my attention was like, uh, you know, I thought I was the man. And then you, you put on this slideshow where it shows the wreckage of your motorcycle and stuff. And, uh, you know, like I said, my message is about helping one percenters make positive choices. And, you know, I think drinking and riding is a, a problem in our culture in outlaw MC culture that, you know, not a lot of people talk about it. It's kind of taboo to even talk about it, you know? And uh, cool. when I saw your videos, man, uh, you know, I, I was relieved to see somebody, especially somebody with your bona fides, man. Just so people know, bro, my brother Phil is a rising star and he comes from a club that, you know, I grew up on the East Coast and his club was the bell that rang the loudest in a lot of circles, you know what I mean? So to see you putting that message out there, man, it, it was a good thing for me. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, my message is, it's just, I put my message out so that, um, you know, so that others don't have to live through what I'm living through right now, you know, and make the same mistakes that I made. And, um, you know, drinking and riding, uh, you know, I, I know it's, it's like a staple in this, outlaw one percent world and um it's almost like if you don't do it you're not you, you know you're not doing the right thing or you're not respected or you're not considered a real outlaw one percenter and i i'm here to say that that's all bullshit that's all bullshit um and you know drinking and riding you know it's cool to have to have a couple drinks or whatever and then you know ride five minutes to your house so that's fine you know if, if that if that's what you want to do i would say no because i know you know what drinking and riding can do to you um i have a spinal cord injury from my accident i have a traumatic brain injury because I, I split my head open uh you know i have so many things that are going on with my body because of this accident or because i was drinking and riding and it was no, it wasn't like it was on like, you know, a crazy street or anything. It was literally just a little bend and I didn't lean my bike enough and my tire hit the curb mm -hmm. and my bike lost control and I started flipping and I didn't let the bike go and I kept flipping and I let the bike go and hit a wall. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, like it was the smallest thing and I was 
And yeah, I did feel like I was the man. I felt like I was the man. I was the vice president of a 1% club. I was 28 years old. I felt like the man, 100%. I had, you know, older guys coming to me to ask me questions. Yeah. I, I did. I, I 100% felt like the man. And, um, and this accident quickly humbled me. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, you know, you, uh, I've known you for several years now, man. And, uh, you know, when your accident happened, you kind of, uh, fell off the map, you know, for a period of time when you were recovering and stuff. And then out of the clear blue sky, I start seeing these, these inspirational videos that you're doing, man. And, uh, you know, your, like I told you the other day, man, your optimism is contagious. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a beautiful thing, brother. Um, Thank you. you know, my, my brother, uh, Big Pete, one percenter, rest in peace. He died uh, from alcohol-related uh, stuff. You know what I mean? And, and right. Rest in peace. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and like we were talking about, you know, we ended up putting a bylaw in place over, over alcohol causing problems in my club. Right. You know, so... Yeah, Which, man. Completely respect, honestly, because, like I, you know, and it, it's hard. It's hard because, you know, like I said, it's it's like a, it's almost like, you know, it's a stigma that that one percenters and outlaw motorcycle bikers carry. It's like if you don't do drugs and you don't, you know, you don't like rock and roll and you don't drink alcohol, like then you're not a true outlaw. Listen, nobody tells you who's a true outlaw. You tell yourself if you're an outlaw. And yeah. don't lie to yourself because you're going to get caught up in some shit that's going to prove to you that you're not an outlaw. Everybody yeah. knows if you're an outlaw, that comes from the heart. Outlaws are not made. Outlaws are grown. Yeah, boy. Oh, so, you know, like when you grow up a certain way, you know, you have you, you live by a certain code. And, you know, when you when you become a grown man and Sometimes you like to ride a motorcycle. Hey, that's what outlaw motorcycle clubs are for. Right. That's where you fit. Yeah, man. Like, I'm, I'm not even saying, you know, a club has to have a bylaw against, you know, drinking and riding or anything. But I do feel like it's important that we as brothers, you know, as, if we have a, a thing that we say in our club. If your brother... Is gonna jump off the side of a cliff. Are you just gonna blindly jump off after him, or are you gonna right. be a brother and grab him before he jumps? Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, you know, it's all part of the brotherhood. You gotta be. Like, a are we playing? Are we playing? Follow the leader, or are we trying to build an empire? Right. It's 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 a complete difference. Like, I don't want to follow the leader. Why? Right. Because guess what? That leader one day is will no longer be the leader. Then yeah. who are you going to follow? Right. Yeah, so I mean... And I follow like, righteousness. Right. That's when it's it. like you said, you know, had somebody been there that night to stop you, who knows where we would be today, you know what I mean? Man, look, you know, I, I wish... I wish I had somebody to... Um, you know, to, to, to take the to take the cup from me or to tell me like, hey, I think, you know, I think I think you you know, you're going above and beyond. But again, how can you, you know, tell an outlaw, you know, yeah. what to do? So, you know and especially me holding the rank that I held, you know, being a vice president, who's who's gonna come to me and tell me, Oh, well, you should stop drinking. You know, like I'm a vice president, you know, so I, I'm sure that, you know, my situation and my rank didn't make it any easier for those people who were there, you know, when when I was drinking and and the people that felt like they couldn't tell me anything and they couldn't, you know, approach me. And I apologize to those guys because, you know, they should never feel that way because I'm a brother before anything. I'm a brother before your vice president. So, you know, you should have my best my best interest at heart always as I should yours. So you telling me, you know, hey, I think I think, you know, you're a little 
you're a little drunk. I think maybe you should slow it down. You know, I should, as a brother, I should understand that. Yeah. You know, and, and like I said, I may not have made it as easy because, you know, I was dealing with things emotionally. Um, you know, uh, I was dealing with two very close deaths to me that, I, you know, put me in a very bad mental space. And, um, you know, I don't know if anybody would have been able to tell me, hey, this is it. I don't know how I would have reacted. So, you know, I'm, I, I apologize to those to those brothers that had to endure that with me and that had to feel like they couldn't. Basically, the ones that had to watch me make the mistakes. Absolutely. You know, and I, I apologize for that because, you know, I know that I probably put brothers in a bad spot, honestly. All day. And it's, it's spot. rest in peace, John John, all day, man. Yeah. Oh, John. Sure. You know, and, and I've said this from the start, from when you first had your accident, though, I believe in my heart that you're strong and you're going to be back on your feet, bro. You know what I mean? I believe, I believe that. that, man. I believe it, too. I, I appreciate that. I believe. And, you know, I, I just think this is, you know, I feel like uh, my calling may have been a higher calling than than you know, just running an outlaw motorcycle club, you know, right. I think my calling is, is much bigger than that. And it's much more personal for me. And, um, right. you know, I, 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 I believe I was put on this earth to help people. And, um, and you can only help, but so many people, you know, as an outlaw, as an outlaw motorcycle club president or whatever the case may be, you know, yeah. cause how much higher are you going to get? The highest you're gonna get is like national president. Okay, now now what? You know, right? You know now now who am I gonna help? You know, like there's only a select few people that you can help, and I just feel like uh, my message is bigger than right. um, than the motorcycle culture itself. Yeah, and that's no disrespect to the motorcycle culture at all because I love the motorcycle culture and I'll always um, I'll always be a part of it whether I like it or not. Right. No, it's a trip, man. Uh, you know, right from the first day that I saw your uh, your videos and stuff, I knew I was looking at something special, man. You know, you're you've always been a very charismatic individual, man, and uh, you know it is like a higher calling that uh, to have you making these videos because it's like we talk about all the time, man. Uh, there's a lot of people that think all these things, but not a lot of people have the the, the homeless but to say what needs to be said. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so when I saw your videos, man, I mean, it's, I knew I was looking at something special, man, and and I hope from the bottom of my heart that it's gonna have the desired impact. You know? Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. And honestly, like, just you, um, you, you know, us collaborating, I believe, is a big deal. Um, because, you know, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not riding the motorcycle anymore and I'm not part of a 1% club anymore, but I still have a lot of people in the motorcycle club culture, especially the 1% world that I have a lot of love for. So what you preach is something that I truly agree with. And I truly, I feel like it's, it's something that we can, we can build off of. And I've used your videos as as templates in the, in the past to show brothers like, look, this is this is what you should be doing. This is what you should believe in. This is how you should carry yourself. You know. So your your videos have definitely helped me in the past. Um. So just to hear you tell me that my videos have helped you is a fucking blessing, honestly, because. You know, that's all I want to do. I want to help people. Right. All day. Wow, yes. Yeah, like I said, man, your, your uh, optimism is contagious, bro. Those, those get over the hump videos, bro, straight up. Like, I use them for inspiration, bro. Um, Every Wednesday. Yeah, man, Every Wednesday. Day. You know, my message, man, same thing, man. I feel like this is... It's like we talk about, man, you one percenters are born, bro. It's like you don't have a choice. You're a one percenter. And this is my culture, man. And it, it hurts me. It breaks my heart to see, you know, members of clubs out there making the wrong decisions 
And it's not the 70s anymore, you know what I mean? Back in the 70s, somebody does something, they go to jail, they take the rap for it, that's it. Now, if you have a patch on and you get caught up to something, it's going to affect not only your club, but a bunch of other clubs too. Yes, yes. You know, so that's that's all I'm trying to do. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be on social media, man. But, you know, I get people hitting me up. Like you just said, people using the videos and – to spread that positive message and and you know if i can get that message across to anybody then it's mission accomplished you know and i and, and bro I, I i completely respect what you're doing because going against the grain isn't easy and yeah. you know the the shit that you talk about um a lot of older a lot of older outlaws you know they might not they might not agree with it because this 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 one percent world has become so power driven. Yeah, everything is about power. Yeah, and, um, and it's and and it's not about brotherhood anymore. Right. It's not it's not about brotherhood. Right. It's all these all these clicks within the clubs, and you know, it's about what you can do for the higher ups. Right. What you can do for the ranked members. Right. Those members. Those and I'm saying members because if they were brothers, they would they would teach, and they would they would they would be grooming somebody to take their place. Instead, I, I watch these older guys. They they keep certain information yeah. from the newer guys, just so the newer guys won't be as as privy to what's going on as they are. Right. And, and it and it sucks because you should be teaching each one teach one yeah you should be teaching not 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 like you know feeding venom you know you want this club to survive after you you want this club yeah. to go on and you want to keep a good name a good reputation and you can't do that with the way these guys are teaching these days Right, like it's not you. You're in. You're trying to instill fear in outdoors. Right. right. How does that work? You know, that's the craziest part, bro. Is like the real old school is is who my me my message resonates with the most. Really, like I can't even count the amount of you know 45, 50 year members in some of these major one percent clubs that hit me up and you know they said everything you're pushing is everything I've been pushing for a long time, etc. The dudes that are most threatened by my message are these you know 50 year old dudes that have been in the club 10 years or less but have worked their way up the chain of command and are now in one of the top slots and are pocketing a bunch of money you know what i mean and they are threatened by everything i'm pushing because you know we're pushing a message of universal respect and etiquette where you know you don't have to try to force loyalty you know these people are out here trying to push this narrative like it's all one big club and, and there's this unwritten set of rules that, you know, it's not written down anywhere. It's totally illegal, yet, you know, they're out here trying to enforce these unwritten rules under the threat of violence, man. And and the only people it serves in the end is, is them and their pockets. Because really it's hurting the club that they're in and it's hurting the culture and they don't give a fuck. You know, because they're, they're not planning on being there all that long anyway. They're just going to use it up for whatever they can and then move on. And then bounce. Right. right. And, and, it, and it sucks because they leave they leave the club with a bunch of younger guys who don't know shit. Right. Because you didn't teach them the right way. Right. And then that's why, that's that's where we're at right now. Yeah. These, these bigger clubs, the bigger clubs in – in the outlaw world, they're taking a bunch of unseasoned guys yeah. off the streets that just ride motorcycles and they're taking like, you know, people's cousins and people's brothers and, and this and that, but they're not true outlaws. Right. And everything is about numbers these days for some reason, because everybody seems to be gearing up for a war that's... Right. That's never going to happen. Right. Because Cold law war. enforcement is on to everything. Yeah. So guess what? 
yeah, somebody can get shot in a town somewhere. One person gets shot. Maybe two people get shot. Cool. That's fine. But there's not going to be any all-out wars between <laughs> any motorcycle clubs. Right. It's not happening. Yo. It's not happening. The feds are on top of everything, bro. So you guys are preparing for some shit that's never going to happen. And, and, if, and, if, and if the outlaws do go to war, guess what? It's going to be against the police. Right. Right. That's what should be happening. That's the real enemy. Is we should be banding together against the real fucking enemy. You a united, know? a united front of outlaw one percenters. All day. Will outnumber the cops in the United States. To, to absolutely outnumber them. Absolutely. I mean, that was the whole original purpose of this fucking diamond patch right here, is to show that we are kindred spirits. You know what I mean? You may be. In your club, you may be a ching, I'm a perro, but we both know we are one percenters. We believe in the same thing. We live by the same code. We are kindred spirits. That's what it's supposed to be about. You know and as, I mean? a, as a chingling, um, Eddie, Eddie was the founder of the chingling. Rest in peace, Eddie. Eddie didn't like the idea of wearing a one percent diamond. Yo. Because he, he felt like the chinglings were not like other one percenters. 100%. Yeah. So he didn't want to wear a one percent diamond. So at first, when I first, you know, when I first became a chingling, I was given a diamond. They gave me my diamond. They said, you earned this because in chingling, in chingling world, diamonds are not just given out. Diamonds yeah. are earned. 100%. So anyone who has a diamond, it it's it should have come from somebody who earned it. I'm not saying that there's not people out there who wear diamonds that that they didn't deserve it, because there there probably are. But oh, yeah. nine out of ten, if a chingling has a diamond on, it's because they earned that diamond. So when I earn my diamond, yes, I put I put a diamond on my vest, mm. and that one vest, that one vest was the only vest that I had that had a diamond on it and after that i i never put a diamond back on my vest why because i don't need a diamond to show people that i'm a one percent yeah 100 percent man one percent is a born um you know that's something i love so much about the previous club man is uh it's like you said man you know your clubhouse is your territory that's home you defend that shit. These clubs out here that are literally trying to, you know, claim an entire state and roll around gas station to gas station looking for patches just so they can regulate on people, man. I mean, that's that's venom. Like you say, man, that's poison right there. And in all honesty, to any real one percent is any real one percent is gonna recognize that that is exactly what the culture was built in rebellion of in the first damn place. You know what I mean? Yep. They, they, come full circle and become the new AMA all over again, you know? So here we go, trying to, uh, you know, make something to get away from the AMA, but you're trying to create something that's just like the AMA. Right. What's the point? Human nature is a trip, man. What's the point? Because, you know, you all this all this territory and, and oh, I, this is my state and this is mine and this is mine, that's cool. You can fucking have it. Mm. You can have it. As a chingling, we were nomads. Yo. So we didn't we don't care about no territory. That's so right. you know, you could fuck your territory. But Yo. guess what? I'm still gonna come through here because you can't control what I do. And that as an outlaw, I'm gonna tell you to go fuck yourself. That point. And you do what you wanna do about it. That's I may right. be in your city, I may be in your town, but guess what? Don't let me get out of it. Hey, you know what's crazy, bro, is there ain't a club out there. I don't care what anybody say, bro. There ain't a club out there that don't think twice before stepping to the chain, my brother. That's a fact. <laughs> Yo, you much know. Respect, much respect to my chinglings, man, because, you know, the chinglings have carried a name for a very long time and they've carried respect for a very long time and um and you know i i never felt like i belonged somewhere 
until I became a chingling. Yeah. And when I became a chingling, I felt like I was home. And this yeah. is why I resonate with your message so much because like you said, you you're not gonna know yourself until you're around a bunch of true outlaws, then you like, damn, like this is 100%. me. This is where I belong. Yeah. Like you know. You can word it, said. you know, you can say it word for word. I don't know the I don't know the exact quote, but you know, I know yeah. that that quote stuck with me because it fits. Because you're a one percenter, bro. That's that's a one percenter. They even said it in the movie Hell's Angels Forever, bro. He said, uh, in every class, there's one kid that's a little rowdier than the rest, and it's a little tougher to shove bullshit down his throat. And as he gets older and older, it gets it gets harder and harder to shove bullshit down his throat. And then one day he meets me and my brothers and realizes this is where he belongs. You know, and that's what we say. Uh, a one percenter is somebody who's been looking for a certain truth his whole life. He's never been able to find that truth until one day he meets one percenters and hears them speak and recognizes their words as the truth he's been looking for all along and he knows he is home. You know, and, and you know, it, it resonates with you because you're a one percenter, you know. That's, and you know what, man? Like, I and I and I came from, you know, I was a part of a non-outlaw motorcycle club before I became a chingling. I was a part yeah. of a club, a club called the Wild Aces. And yeah. um, shout out to shout out to the Wild Aces because they taught yeah. me a lot and I learned a lot yeah. with those guys. And um, you know, there were a few guys there that that they put me under their wing and they they showed me the right way and. You know, believe it or not, I just I just realized that that wasn't for me, and I was more of an I was more of an outlaw kind of person, honestly, and that's yeah. the honest truth. Like those, yeah. you know, what they what they're labeled as is ninety nine percent clubs. Those yeah. ninety nines are, you know, they're more family oriented and they're and they're more like you know family parties and let's go do stuff together, let's go have fun, and outlaws are a little different. You know, yeah. outlaws are a little more like, you know, they get drunk and they, they like to start trouble sometimes and things like that. You know, like, yeah. so um, shout out to the Wild Aces because they taught me a lot and they 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 allowed me to make connections in the 1% world before I became a 1%er. And then um, when I became a 1%er, it was just all love from there. And, yeah. you know, and it was just like a level up for me. Like, I feel like I just, I just grew out of, um, you know, that club and what they believed in. Yeah. And there's nothing against them. No. You know, nothing against these 99s, but, you know, these uh, us as one percenters, as outlaws, we just we just live a little differently and we handle things a little differently. Yeah. You know, and, and I got into a couple situations in that club where, I you know, I wanted to handle things more like in a physical manner. And, you know, I had a couple of guys like, yo, you know, we don't do that. We don't do that. And I'm like, well, who the fuck's gonna stop me? And yeah. at that point, I was like, eh, <laughs> I don't think this is the place for me because if these are supposed to be my brothers, you know, right. and, and I'm and I'm trying to fight certain people, like it's not, it's not, it's not for me. Right. Um, and and you know, same thing happened with the Chinglings. You know, like there were certain people when um, I was in the Bronx Charter, and there were certain people that I didn't get along with, and uh, you know, I wanted to fight certain people when. Yeah. It was a bunch of bullshit that was going on and they wouldn't allow me to transfer. So I, I dropped my colors in good standings yeah. and I went to another chingling charter and I prospected from bottom rocker up yeah. Yeah. all over again. Yeah, man. I've, I've never been part of like a, any other club. This is the only motorcycle club that I've been a part of, you know, but... I was part of I was part of a neighborhood, you know, when I was younger, and uh, you know, basically, I was looking for brotherhood my entire life, man, since I was a kid. And, and I can tell you 100%, I never knew true brotherhood until I met a one percent. You know what I mean? And it's it's hard to explain. You know, it's like that old saying: uh, for those that get it, no explanation is needed. For those that don't, no explanation is possible. You know what I mean? No, uh, you know, like when you and me talk, it's 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 understood. You know, we we went through the same thing because I had the exact same feeling, bro. Like there, there's nothing that compares, bro. The brotherhood in a one percent club is second to none. Right. 
even the feds say that shit, bro. Even the feds that infiltrate clubs come out of it and they're like, man, them dudes are more brothers than, than even the feds and shit. You know, they get mad. They get mad because you know what? They get mad when they can't when they can't flip somebody, mm -hmm. and, they, and they get and they get jealous. You know why? Because you at different precincts don't even like each other. Right. Cops, cops don't even like each other. There's certain cops that they got beef. Like it's, it's ridiculous. So it's that's why I said, if one percenters came together as a united front, it would be right. absolutely unstoppable. And that's what this culture was created for. Yes. It's unstoppable, an unstoppable force. Right. And that's my message. You know, that's the problem. The problem is when clubs try to control each other and other people against other people's will you know when when one club tries to control another against its will what this culture was built on from day one is universal etiquette and respect there's there's a set of universal norms that apply across the board nobody wants to get you know publicly humiliated nobody wants to get stolen from nobody wants their wife messed with you know what i mean these are universal things all right. Give what you get. You know, I mean, there's clubs out there that have been wearing that shit on their vest for a long time. Take none, give none. Give what you get. That's what this culture is supposed to be about. And it's only when we step over that line and start trying to control each other and say, you know, this is our town. If you're going to be here, you need to do this, that, and the third. And, and, you know, or even worse, tell people they can't even start a club. You're not even allowed to wear pants. Exactly. You know what I mean? And uh, it's that's where it comes from because what ends up happening is rebellion. You know what I mean? You try to control people. Every every major fraternal organization in the world, pretty much, was started in rebellion of oppressive control. You know what I mean? But you Whether know what? Bro, this, this goes back to yeah. ancient times, man. You know why? Because if you look at the banditos and the Mongols. Yeah. Right. Those clubs were made because the big 1% clubs didn't want anybody out of their race. Right. You know? So yeah. this this goes back, you know, before you and I, you know? Way back. It, right. just, it, it just sucks because there was something that could have been so good in this 1% right. world. It could have been such a jewel, such a gem. And I, That's the trip, like, and I feel like, you know, like I, I understand your message and you're trying to get it back to where it should be. But I, I can tell you, man, I just feel like this culture is so far gone oh, yeah. that it's 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 just absolutely going to be an uphill battle, like no matter See, which way you put it. That's where what we're doing right now comes into play, brother, because essentially a lot of people have it in their head, but a lot, but everybody's afraid to say something. Everybody that I've talked to that are members of these major clubs that fully agree with my message, they say, man, I agree with you, but I'm going to just keep my head down. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to target on my back, you know, and by doing what we're doing right now, like I said, somebody with your bona fides, your credentials, somebody that's been through what you've been through, coming out and saying, look, I agree with all this shit, right? That's going to make it so that people possibly, hopefully, are more willing to, to speak on it. You know what I mean? Because the only way that the right change can come along is if the right people start pushing for it, if leadership starts pushing for it, and it becomes the norm. You know what I mean? Because... All this bullshit that they're out there pushing, that shit got put into practice because leadership was pushing it. Because it wasn't that way always, you know? But that comes, that, that comes with the followers, man. That comes with yeah. the followers. There's way too many followers in this 1% world. And that's because the diamond has become a fashion statement. Yeah. Right. The diamond has become a, a, a level of security. Right. Because people put these vests on and they think they're untouchable. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. And, and it's it's poison, man. It's poison oh, because yeah. it's the way they're being taught. It's right. the way they're being taught. Man, I was a 28-year-old vice president of 
a club that was formed in the 60s. You know, this club was yeah. formed before my parents were alive. Mm. This, this, the Chingalings were about before my parents were born. So, Man. you know, being a 28 year old vice president of this organization was was an absolute um honor for me and i felt honored because there's been so many people that were in and out of this motorcycle club before me fucking and a. you guys chose me to be your vice president fucking a. hey man like i'm gonna do whatever i can to make you guys proud and to do no. right by you guys and 100%. I always tried to teach, although I was still learning. Teach one, teach one. See, you're a one percent. It comes one, back teach. to you. Mm -hmm. Although I was still learning, I still tried to teach. And I always told the guys under me, be the change that you want to see. Yo. So right. you don't like this? All right. Try to change it. Right. Do lead something by example. Lead by yeah. example. And you know what? I failed at that. Because I shouldn't have been drinking and driving as much as I was. Part in the noise in the background. Um, hey. I, I should have put on no a worries, bro. I mean, we all human. Right, right. I, and I'm not too much of a man to admit my wrong. I was wrong, Yo. and I put I put brothers in a in a spot where, you know, they they maybe they felt like they couldn't tell me anything, especially because I was such a snappy individual, because I'm gonna get you before you get me, and I'm like that, just Yo. in general. So, you know, I, I just ah man, it's it's a sucky it's a sucky spot to be in, man, because, you know. I, I, I probably took advantage of certain things that I shouldn't have taken advantage of, you know. And I can I mean, bet you that yeah. alcohol, alcohol played a part in it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. No, uh, you know we're all human, and what you're talking about is, you know, the man making the patch, and that's one of the biggest problems out there right now is this narrative being pushed that the patch makes the man and too many people out there wear these one percent diamonds and are you know feeding that narrative to to everybody you know especially like some of these uh prominent speakers on youtube man they've been pushing that narrative for years that the patch makes the man the patch makes the man you know if somebody's got a certain patch they can do no wrong you know and it's it's venom bro it's poison it's a poisonous man. message you know, when I when I was a prospect, when I was a prospect for the Chinglings, right? Um, I got into trouble. You know, I'm not gonna get into details. I got into trouble, and my president was like, "Hey, uh, take the center patch off." Mm. You know, and I was being knocked knocked back down. You know, yeah. to you know, no no center patch. Yeah. And um, and I and I I took the vest off. I cut the patch off. No questions asked. I didn't ask a question. Mm. And Yo. the president was like, oh, you don't you don't want to know? I said, honestly, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. The patch is gone already. Yo. So they were like, oh, but, oh, you don't care about your patches? I said, it's not that I don't care about my patches. It's that I was flared before I became, before I came here. Yo. Before I became a chingling, I was flared. Yo. You guys knew who I was before I came here. Yo. So with or without that center patch, I'm still going to be flair. Okay, People are still going to walk into this clubhouse and respect me as flair. Yeah, right. Okay, it didn't yeah. matter to me. I'm not scared of that. Because I'm a man first. And the patch okay, doesn't yeah. make me. Yeah, the man makes the patch. And you know, that's what I always say too, is if you truly love your club, you're gonna be ready to serve your club in whatever capacity the brothers deem fit. If the brothers, if, if I'm in the club and the brothers deem that I need to take off my center patch, I'm taking off my center patch, no questions right. asked. Right. You know. And and yeah. I and I honestly I felt like 
I felt like I was being tested because right. it's like if your president tells you something, you don't you're not supposed to second guess them. Right. Unless unless there's something that you don't agree with and you, you ask them in a private setting where there's yeah. nobody around so it doesn't look like you're questioning their authority. That point. That's a different story. But hey, you said take off the center patch. I'm yeah. taking it off. I'm not going to ask you why. And it's Fuck it's not a. that I don't care about my patches, but I respect you as my president. Fucking a. You sharp, brother, it's because that's actually a trick It's chain yeah. of command, bro. Yeah. Fucking and, you, a. And, and, and yeah, I, I'm I'm one that I speak up for something that I don't believe in. But you know what? Me taking my me getting my center patch taken, it was something that the the higher ups believed in. And guess what? I'm a prospect. Mm. Hey, I'm learning still. I will be in the things that I don't agree with. Guess what? I will be the change that I want to see one day. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what happened. I became the vice president. And I started to make the changes that I felt were necessary. All day. You know, and you're still doing it, brother. You're still you're still doing it, you know. Like, like that's why I, I, I pushed so hard for us to, to be able to do this, bro, because I feel like this is very important. Bro. I, like I said, when I started seeing your videos, these inspirational videos, this this contagious optimism. You know, it, it, and like, you know, you, you got into such a bad accident, bro, and you are like paralyzed from the waist down, right? So I'm, I am not paralyzed. I, well, I have a slight paralyzation. Um, I yeah. feel everything. I feel everything. Um, yeah. But I have no voluntary movement under my, under, uh, just about my belly button. Yeah, I, I, like I, you know, my legs. So like I feel everything. Uh, you know, I have muscle spasms, but I'm not able to voluntarily move them by myself. Yeah, um, and that's and that's because you know I, I have a spinal cord injury, and your spinal cord controls everything in your body, all the nerves, all the connections. You know, so my body is still in shock right now. My body is still going through a lot of changes. So um, there's no telling whether I'm gonna walk or not. But guess what? I believe I'm going to walk. You will. You will. So, you know, with God by my side and, and the support system that I have, yeah. uh, I believe that I will be on my feet again, you know, like, and I'm going to keep pushing until that happens. Well, I mean, and that's, that's what I'm saying is like, you know, even in the situation you're in, you are still finding strength to, to put out this positive message, man, and, and hopefully help a lot. I believe your message is gonna help a hell of a lot of people, man. I do. You know, I hope so, man. I, I really, I really do hope so because there's a lot of people in this culture that I have so much love for. You know what I'm saying? Like my best friend is still a chingling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one of my other closest friends is still a wild ace. So you know, some of my closest friends still wear colors and still ride their motorcycles on a daily basis so you know i just i would be so devastated if i was to see someone i love have to go through the same thing that i'm going through right now right and you know the, the alcoholism and riding and drinking and shit is a huge problem in the culture but really the real problem that we're tackling here is people that feel like they can't speak up about what they know to be wrong, you know what I mean? And, you know, Lord willing, man, we can make a change in, in that department, you know what I mean? Because, hopefully, uh, you know, it's like I said, man, you know me, I've been pushing this message for fucking years, man, and, and I've had so many people hit me up privately, agreeing with everything I'm saying and shit, and I'm like, man, you don't even realize the change that you could make if you would just step up and speak out about this shit, man. You know, so that's what it takes, man, is is showing people that that they can speak up about what they know in their heart to be right. You know what I mean, and, and you know, bro, 
guess what? There may be some people that watch this video and be like, oh, fuck these guys. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. That's right. That's fine because they'll learn, you know, they'll learn the hard way. That's right. And, you know, if we can impact, dude, if we can impact five people with this video. Mission accomplished. Damn right. right. Because that's that's an accomplishment. If we can help one person with this video, that's an accomplishment. Because guess what? That one person may be able to help one other person. And then that one other person may be able to help one other person. So guess what? Now we help three people. Listen, it's all a chain reaction. That's right. And my my take on, on all of this is that, like I said, be the change that you want to see. Be the change that you want to see. Right. Be the change that you want to see. Don't don't be quiet because you're scared. Because right. guess what? If you're scared, you shouldn't be wearing a diamond. That part. And that and that's and they're that gonna take part. advantage of it, man. Them snakes, them snakes, when they see that you're afraid to speak up, they're gonna spot that like a like blood in the water for sharks, man. And they're gonna take full advantage of it, man. And you know. Just like this negative cycle has been set in motion, a positive cycle can be set in motion at the same time, man. And, you know, I believe that's what we're going to do, bro. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. I know you're not going to stop, you know. There's no there's no quit in me, brother. There's no know quit that. in me at all. Like, so for man. me, like, for me, no drinking and riding, no drinking and driving, um, you know, and... I definitely speak up about be the change that you want to see. Yeah. And I'm always I'm always gonna believe that I'm always gonna I'm always gonna believe in each one to each one. I'm always gonna believe in in these things that are built to help the people around you. Yeah. That's and if you're not helping the people around you. You are not a true brother. You yeah. are a member. And yeah. I noticed that there's a lot of these clubs that are bringing people in just, they're bringing people in that they're cool with just for the votes. Right. And it's causing clicks within right. clubs. Your club is a click. That's right. That It, it makes no sense to make a smaller click within your click. I'm telling you. Because you're leaving people out, and that's not what brothers do. Right. We call them patch racks. These these cats that that are just members. They're not they're not real brothers. They're they're just like a, like you hang your patch up on there. You know what I mean? And those yeah. are the ones, those are the ones that are that are those are the ones along with the 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 negativity yeah in these in these and these leaders that don't yeah. want to give up that power. Right. That's that's what's killing this 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 motorcycle club outlaw or outlaw one percent world. Dudes that are in it for all the wrong reasons. They they look at a patch and they think about what doors that patch can open for them. They don't think about how can they help that patch? How can they further the agenda of the people that wear that patch? They look at the patch and say, what can that patch do for me? You know what I mean? You know, I'll tell you, and it's and it sucks to say, bro, and, and it, I'm telling you, it really sucks to say, but I'm happy to not mm. wear patches. Mm. I'm happy to not be a part of a club. Yeah. I'm happy to not have to deal with the bullshit politics. Right. Because that's all it is. It's politics. Yeah. It's all a it is, it's politics. And it's like you said, man, being a ching will always be part of you. You know, it's who you are, who your core, and nobody can ever take that away from you. And, you know, in all honesty, bro, I feel like like you said, man, what you're doing now has the potential to help far more than just the teams. You know, it has the potential to help every 1% club out there, man. And I mean, that's powerful shit, my brother. Thank you, bro. I, I truly trust me, bro. I, 
your word is 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 truly appreciated, bro. And, and whatever I can do to help you, uh, you know, with with your platform and your message, I'm down, bro. Because I truly believe in it. I truly do believe in it, and I believe that, you know, I believe we're gonna make a change. Is the change gonna be big enough to change the culture? I don't know, man. I don't know because this is, listen, this culture yeah. is very, very far from what it was formed right. to be. It's and, like Bill Hart said, you know, he said, well, you know what happens if we don't try? Nothing. You right. I mean? You'll so, miss every shot that you don't take. That part. Yeah. You'll miss every shot that you don't take. So, my brother, I truly appreciate you for, for taking all these shots and and trying to make the difference because it, it's it's bro it's scary because this one percent world things happen fast yeah. and it, and the things that you preach may bring a lot of heat to you and your club and the fact that you're still going with it i absolutely respect that bro because like I said, there may be a lot of people that don't agree with it, and it may call, it may bring harm to yeah. some of your guys at some point, Absolutely. to you at some point, God forbid. Absolutely. But you're still pushing, and I respect that, bro. I yeah. respect that. And I whatever I can do to help, I'm here, bro. I'm like you, brother. I'm relentless with this shit, you know? But thank you so much. I appreciate that, bro. And, uh, yeah, man, I, you know, that's what I wanted to do today was, uh, you know, use my channel to spread the word about you and what you're doing, you know. You've been my brother for years, man, and I love you. I love you to death. And I, I right back at you, bro. I'll do anything to help you. Straight up. Appreciate that. Yeah. Same here, bro. Same here. Same here. Okay. You got a brother here, and I'm down to help, bro. And whatever I can do to to help the one percent culture grow and 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 grow in a in a in a positive way i'm down i'm, oh, I'm down bro, because like i said i may not be on a motorcycle but i have a lot of people that i love that are still out there on those two wheels and and i just i just hope that they remain safe but always stay dangerous Hell yeah. Always stay dangerous, but safe, but dangerous. Right. Because so your social media is Flair in the Chair across the board, right? Yes, sir. Flair in the Chair. At Flair yes. in the Chair, man. At Flair in the Chair because, you know, I'm still on wheels, man. Yo. And, you know, I may be on four wheels. I may be on four wheels, but... Hey, I'm still on wheels right now, and, and until I get on my feet, flaring the chair is 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 gonna keep pushing, or keep rolling, or whatever hey, you want to call it. You know? Oh, I love it, bro. I love it. I love the the navy blue flames, the whole joint, man. Navy blue has been my favorite color since a kid. Word. Because I am I was born and raised in the Bronx as a Yankee fan. Shout out to my Yankees, you know. Yes, um, I was born and raised as a Yankee fan, so pinstripes, that navy blue and white has always been in my blood. And um, I, that, I feel like I was I'm, I was meant to be a chingling because chingling colors are navy blue and white. That's what I was about to say, bro. You know, like, <laughs> and navy blue has been my favorite color since a kid, man, so... I was like, damn, I was really, truly meant to be a chingling, man. Like, 100%. And, uh, you know, like like I said, like, shout out to my chinglings. Always much love and respect to my chinglings. Oh, and, man, man. You know, there were, a, there were a lot of motorcycle clubs that came to see me when I was in the hospital. And a big shout out to those guys, man. Like, mm. the guys that, that came to see me in the hospital. And, you know, I can name a few off the top of my head, the Diablos. Shout out to my Diablos. I love my Diablos. 100%. Bikers. Shout out to the unknown bikers because they made sure to come see me in the hospital. Ascari, which is a, a street commando club in the Bronx. Those are my brothers. Mm. Shout out to those guys. They they came to see me in the hospital. like, And, you know, my chinglings. Shout out to my chinglings because, okay. you know, 
not all Ching Lee came, but you know, the ones that, that I truly had those bonds with, they did come see me in the hospital and they made sure that I was okay. So, you know, shout out to those guys, you know. Oh, Big you, shout out to, to all those guys that, that came to see me that knew that I wasn't in the motorcycle club world anymore, but they were still treating me as a brother. They were still supporting me as a brother. Even after knowing that I wasn't going to be in the motorcycle club world anymore, they still showed me that respect and love. And that's why I'm here with you, bro, because I want to see the culture grow. I want to see the culture get better because I want to see the brothers that I have in the culture thrive and be right. better. Damn right, brother. Yo, I love my chains. I love my Diablos. A lot of people don't know this. I actually made a couple of songs uh, paying homage to the Timberlands. I definitely know that because those songs, <laughs> those songs were played over and over in my clubhouse, bro. Trust me. Hey, I appreciate Trust that, my me. brother. Um, and a lot of people, another thing, man, I just want to put this out there. A lot of people don't know, man, you actually died in your accident. You, you were reborn. Yeah. You know? Yeah, That's man. That's a powerful thing, man. So I got, when I got into my accident, uh, the firefighters were the first ones on the scene. Um, and they came, they got to me, and I was already not breathing. They started pumping my chest. They tried to do CPR. Um, and about, you know, I guess about 30, 40 seconds of trying to do CPR, uh, they turned to my brothers. I was with three other chingalings at the time. And they turned to my brothers and they said, he's gone. We lost him. Mm. They walked away from me. And um, a, f uh, a few seconds later, I'm not sure how, how long later, um, my body jerked. And one of them seen it and they ran to me and they started pumping my chest and they got it. They got a, a heartbeat back. And, um, and uh, yeah. I was reborn, man, August 4th. August 4th, man. So I feel like I have two birthdays, honestly. Absolutely. My birthday my birthday's coming up August 9th. Uh, I mean, October 9th. My birthday's coming up October 9th in a few days. Uh, but, you know, August 4th, I also, you know, my mom asked me what I wanted to do. She wanted to celebrate me because yeah. I was, you know, I was, I was pronounced dead and I came back, you know, I'm like, I'm like the grim, a walking Grim Reaper, bro. I'm you know, like, you. you know, so yeah, it, it is a big deal, man. And that's just another, another reason for you guys who are watching to not drink and ride, not yeah, don't man. drink and drive. Don't drink and ride, bro. I could, I could have not came back. That's and then crazy. what? Now my family and 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 my friends and my club brothers, now they're putting up rest in peace posts and things like that. You know, like, dude, it 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 was. I don't know what what could have made a difference, but I'm alive and I'm blessed, and I thank God every day because, dude, I don't have any other clever reasoning behind why I'm still here. That's I don't right. know why. My only reason I can believe is God kept me here for me to help people. Mm. For me to That's make right, sure bro. that people don't suffer the way that I've suffered. I believe that 100%, bro. You know, you you were part of the 1% club, man, and, and I'm in the club, man, and one thing that you see when you're a member of a club, bro, the list of people that, that pass away that you're close to just grows, 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 bro. And uh I mean it, it could have it was this close, you know, to you being there on that list, man. It, but you hear talking to me right now, spreading a message of positivity, bro. I mean that's I, that's powerful shit, my brother. And you know, um the chinglings have always have been on, on 180th and Hughes for years, for years, oh, the 80s, and, um, since the 80s. And um, they have a wall on the corner of 180th and Hughes in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And um, on that wall are all of the fallen brothers who were chingling. 
Mm. And, you know, just to think that I was seconds away from being being on that wall. Mm. I want, I, and this is, and this message is uh, especially to my chingalings because I know they can feel it because they look at that wall and we go and we pay our respects to that wall. We go and we pray in front of that wall. And we go and we talk to those brothers that, that led the path for us to have this club. Um, and I just want everybody to just take a second and think before they start getting on their motorcycle after drinking. Especially my chinglings because, like I said, I could have been on that wall across the street from the clubhouse that we pay our respects to, the wall that we always partied in front of, that wall that we always parked our bikes in front of, that wall that we park Eddie's bike in front of every first Sunday of September every year. Mm. I could have been on that wall. And I want you guys to know that I'm not on that wall for a reason. And my reason is to help to help people, not only one percenters, not only bikers, people in general, just people. There are people who drink and drive that 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 don't ride motorcycles that I still want to get my message across to because they could die just as well. So please, man, please, all of you guys, before you get behind the wheel. All right, we live again, brother. We had some uh, technical difficulties, uh, loss of power, but uh, we're back on. You know, uh, we're probably going to wind down the video, man. Uh, me and Flair Bro, we're here to spread some positivity, man. And hopefully, uh, I think we were able to accomplish that with this video, you know. Uh, I'm going to plug my brother Flair's social media in the uh, description of the video. And, you know, listen, man, I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me, brother. You know, it's it's a long time coming, and it's, it's just an absolute honor for me. And I love you, my brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. Thank you for giving me a platform to speak on. Uh, thank you for valuing my opinions. Um, I appreciate you, bro, honestly. And I love what you're doing with your channel and the message that you're putting out and um, how you're trying to teach. Because I, I respect that. Each one teach one. So oh, I truly okay. respect what you're doing. So I hope, I hope you know, I hope this video helps many people. And I hope we can make another video that helps many people and I hope that both of our messages get across and I just, you know, my message, my overall message is just to make sure your brothers are always in the best hands. Mm. Like always make sure that you take care of those people next to you. Definitely. Always, 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 no matter whether they're going to get mad at you or not, just Make sure you let them know how you feel. Mm. And just keep going. Just keep pushing. Keep pushing. Never quit. Never quit. And don't let anybody control you. The only thing that, that can control you is righteousness. That boy. That's it. Preach righteousness and that's it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, listen, that, that phrase right there, each one, teach one, bro, ever since I first heard you say it, We've been implementing it, bro. <laughs> that's, sure, a, that's a good phrase right there. For sure. Because, you know, like, whatever I learn, I'm going to pass it on. Yeah. Because if I feel like it's a, you know, it's it's giving me a, a, a heads up on something, I want yeah. my brothers to have the same heads up. I don't want to hide it and be like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna keep this away from them so I can look better than them. Yeah. No. We all need to look good together 100%. and unify because if you don't unify, then people, it's, it's, it's clear as day. You can tell when a club is going through issues. Right. Unless 
they are taught to keep their shit in house. That's right. You know, it's all about it's all about teaching, and it's all about learning as well. Because you got a lot of these older guys that come into this outlaw world and they feel like they know everything already, mm-hmm. and they they feel like you know nobody could teach them anything. And right. You're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. So, you know, being able to learn and being able to teach. Each one, teach one, man. Dang right. Be the change that you want to see. The more, the better my brother is doing, the better I am doing because we are one. You know what I mean? Right. Like what they said in in Drumline, one band, one sound. That part. One band, one sound. That's it. That part. One person fucks up, we all fuck up. Hey, so. And you, my brother, you know, brother don't fuck up, man. Yeah. What, what I can tell you, bro, is like I said, man, your optimism is is just contagious, brother. It really is. Because, you know, for as bad of a day as I may be having or whatever, just when I see your videos, bro, I'm like, man, this man died, has gone through so much, and is sitting here telling me, keep pushing get over the hump, you know what I mean? And and it, it hits me, bro, it hits me like a ton of bricks. And, you know, if I could give you one piece of advice, it's to use that gift, bro, because you you have the, the power to positively affect many people's lives with, with that gift that you have, brother. Thank you, brother, you I know? appreciate that, honestly. Truly, your words, they mean a lot. And, and coming from you, that's, you know, my brother, I appreciate it. I'm, right back at you, my I'm gonna yeah. keep pushing, bro. I'm gonna keep pushing, just like I tell everybody else. Just like I tell everybody else, keep pushing. I'm gonna keep pushing, and yes. until I get this message across, I'm not gonna stop, man. So I appreciate you for having me on your channel, my brother. Truly, thank you, bro. Always much love and respect. I I love what you're doing. I love you. Wish you and your wifey nothing but the best. You and your club, shout out to Los Perros. I appreciate you guys, bro. And, um, you know, I wish you guys nothing but the best in the future, honestly, bro. Oh, love, brother. Thank you so much. Hey, right back at you. It means the world. I love you. I got nothing but love for you, nothing but respect. And, uh, you know, we really, hey, we may do another one here soon. We, we, it's, you know, completely up to you. And, uh, you know, one way or another, we, we about to link up too, my brother. Oh, yeah. You know? Let's do uh, it. I'm only in Florida, man. I ain't that far. That part. I ain't that far, man. I know I was born and raised in the Bronx. You can't take the Bronx out of me, but you know I'm in Florida for now. You know. That part. So you could take you, know, you could take the the flare out the Bronx, but you can't take the Bronx out the flare, right? <laughs> and I tell you what, you won't be able to take that name out the Bronx either because that Asshole. name will live in the Bronx for a long time, bro. That part. That's yeah, something yeah. That I can tell you. But I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for having me, honestly. Thank you, my brother. Um, I'm going to holler at you. And, uh, yeah, his his social media will be in the uh, description. Thank you, my brother. Thank you all for watching. And uh, stay dangerous. All right, y'all. Stay dangerous. Be easy, y'all. Yeah, so.